hello, hello, hello. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna show you how I do interior shots. Uh, a lot of you guys have requested that I do sort of like a thought process or show how I do my interior shots. So this video is gonna pretty much cover all the well, basics and my thought process and everything. Uh, we're gonna do daylight now and later today we're gonna do some night photography and show you how you can use strobing or uh, a fixed light to pretty much light up the interior. So. I've been so lucky to have Porsche to Bergen borrow me a Taycan. Uh, it's a 4S with a two-tone interior, so I think it's gonna look pretty bomb on photos. Um, I'm gonna show you what I do, what I think, the angles that I shoot, and pretty much how I do interior shots for cars. So stay tuned. As usual, I use the Sony A7R2 with the size 16 to 35 millimeter. I use this pretty much exclusively on cars um, and it's perfect for interior shots. So when I shoot interior shots, I usually go for what I would call a three point setup where I do photography from this side. So you get the passenger side with the sort of like view over to the driver side uh, middle. So you shoot from the back seat and you get the front and on the driver's side. So you get sort of like a three-point setup and then you do details in between. So you, you sort of like have three photos that, you, that are like your main photos and then you fill in the gaps with detail shots and sort of like make a story where you go from driver's side, details, middle, the details and then end up on this side. So it's just kind of like a story all the way through. Um, I've parked the car in the shadow for now. I've driven as far up as I can so I can sort of like get a tiny bit of sun from the, um, the building up there. Uh, if it goes all the way back, I'm gonna drive a little bit forward so I get a tiny bit of light. I don't want direct sunlight in because it looks really bad um, and it's really hard shadows. So sort of like a shadow, but a tiny bit in the sun is, is perfect. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna show you pretty much the three point setup. So um, when you're shooting the three point setup, remember that every car is different. So for instance, the Taycan is very much like, it, it's really narrow in, in the doors and where the driver's position and the passenger position. So when you're shooting the, the shot from, from this angle, you sort of like have to almost get in the back seat. So what you can do is you can take the seat, just turn it back and then lean the backside. So you get perfect vision yeah and this looks pretty much what I want so you have sort of like uh, this view right here where you get center console uh, driver's position and sort of like the details one thing I do not like about this is the background but that we can cut out later in post so that doesn't matter so we're gonna shoot the first photo. So one thing I do like about interior and especially car photography is having, having a sort of like a, a front object that is blurred that makes Part of like framing the photo so in this instance we could use the b pillar or the back side of this uh, so when we shoot sort of like get both in the photo that kind of helps with the framing of the photo so we're taking the first pointer so now we're gonna move inside the car 
So now we're inside the car. I'm sitting in the middle seat on the back and we have a perfect view in front. So one thing you can do is this seat is turned all the way back. So we can do the same with this one. Just so we have more space to work with. So using the 16 to 35, we sort of like get the entire cockpit if you want. So we're gonna shoot the middle one. Yeah, so now we've shot the middle one. We're gonna do some detail shots from the back. So that would be, for instance, the clock. That's a really nice subject. Uh, we have sort of like details down here. We can shoot through the seats like this, where you sort of like use the, the seats to, to frame sort of like the wheel. So this would be perfect. Um, we could do details on that side and details on that side. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. So now we've taken from the passenger side in the middle, some detail shots from from the middle and we're gonna do the driver's side. As I said earlier, this car is proportioned where it's better to take the, the, the shot from this side, from the back. So it would be sort of like an angle like this, where you get this in the front, the B pillar to frame where everything is. And what we also could do from this side is do detail shots that sort of like goes down on the wheel and on to the left side. So now we've taken the three point sort of like setup. We've taken the driver side, the middle and the passenger side, as well as some details in between. So I'm gonna show you the three sort of like primary shots. So we have the driver side looks like this and the middle one looks like this and then you have the passenger side that looks like this and in between you sort of like have detailed shots that you take from the same position so that would be something like this from the passenger side and yeah this from the middle side where you sort of like frame the steering wheel a bit more and uh, the last thing that I do uh, is that I sit in the driver's seat and I do sort of like detail shots across the entire interior. So that could be this high glance uh, sort of like detail on the door handle. It could be the air ducts, uh, the Porsche badge, the steering wheel, drive mode. We could do a shot on the watch between the steering wheel we could do sort of like this part, the Taycan. If you angle it correctly on the Taycan, you can get the text really cool. So you're just using the light to sort of like get a good reflection so you can see the, the object a bit more. The light and the sun has sort of like dipped a bit more down so we're gonna drive a bit forward so you can see now the sun sort of like gets through and hits the left side and the steering wheel so not completely in the sun just so it's touching and it makes a really cool effect so uh, now we're finished with the uh, three points and the de details in between. I've sort of like given you a thought of what I do and why I do it. Uh, so we're pretty much finished with this part where we're shooting during daylight. And in the next part we're going to shoot during nighttime. So 
I'll see you then. Okay, so now I've pretty much done the whole interior shots during daylight. And now I'm gonna show you how you can do interior shots when it's dark. So we're at the studio. This is a parking space inside. So we have complete control over the lights. It's dark outside now, so we can do whatever we want inside here. We have the car and we need a tripod, a light source, you can use pretty much any light source as long as it's fixed. So cell phone light, work light. I use a Godox LC500. Um, I used to actually do every light painting with a work light that I bought for like 20 bucks. So you can use pretty much anything. And you need a camera with preferably a wide angle lens. And I'm gonna show you how I set it up, the settings, and what I do with the uh, fixed lights. So this is a completely different sort of like take on interior shots than daylight, but you can get some really cool results. So I'm gonna show you that now. Now I've set up the camera on the tripod. So I've found an angle like this. So you get sort of like the entire cockpit view. I've turned off every light there is on the ceiling as well as uh, the doors. We have the regular lights on, that's no problem. And I've taken the, the mood light to white. So it should blend in with uh, everything pretty nicely. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the lights. And yeah, before I forget, the settings on the camera is 15 seconds uh, F13. So you get pretty much everything in the entire shot uh, crystal clear and ISO at 50. Uh, I'm using uh, the Godox LC500. It's set on, on four and a half thousand Kelvin. So it depends on the light and uh, pretty much color, but you can change that in post, so it doesn't really matter, really. So yeah, I'm gonna take off the lights and I'm gonna start shooting the camera on a, I think I have a five second, yeah, five second cell timer. And I'm just gonna light and walk around the car and uh, you'll see what I'm doing. So yeah. So what I do is that I make the camera go on a five second shutter. Then I use the light source and I pretty much light everything there is inside. So wheel, seat, then I move to the front of the car and get the dashboard and I move around the car and do from the other side. Uh, so we've taken from this angle and now we're gonna move around and shoot from the other side. Now we're on the other side and we're gonna shoot from this angle so we get the steering wheel, the center console, the seat and the dash with the watch. And as before, I've taken off the lights inside and changed the ambient light to white. So we're gonna take off the light and do another walk around. Now we finished taking the two shots on the passenger side and on the driver's side. 
I'm not gonna do a complete set on this. I'm just gonna do sort of like a proof of concept to show you pretty much how I do when it's dark. So you get a completely different look and vibe to the photos. Uh, for instance, instead of the natural lights. So we're gonna pretty much go to the studio now and edit both the daylight photos as well as the light painting photos. So you can see the difference and pretty much the workflow on both styles. So yeah, talk to you in a bit. Welcome to the studio. So now we're gonna edit the interior shots, both the daylight one as well as the night one, if you can call it that one. So here we have one of the photos from the day shoot. We have a few shots that we took, details and whatever. And remem remember the thing that I said about the three setup, like driver side, middle, passenger side, and then fill in everything. So that would be, this would be passenger side. And then we could do one middle, something like this one, and then do the driver side. So you get three different angles and then fill in like details on the door, the steering wheel, the watch, just fill in everything in between. So you have details on the steering wheel, cup holder, yeah, you get the idea. So now we're gonna edit one of the photos here, I like this one so you can see here you have sort of like the, um, the section of the seat that's in front so it sort of helps with the framing of the photo and it's I like that a lot so let's see it's it's a kind of tricky interior on this car as well because it's not tan it's it's sort of like a um, mix between leather and crayon color so it's really like hard to edit but we're gonna try and do it as best as i can let's bump up the shadows a bit exposure a tiny bit contrast the highlights go down we're gonna do a little bit of dehaze probably 10 saturation I'm gonna make it a lot warmer something like this maybe yeah something like that then we're gonna take away the green here the red I don't think we need as well and we're gonna change on the luminance on the orange. Probably yellow is and red is. It's a bit dark here still, so I'm gonna use a brush and just go over these parts. Not the back part, because I want that to be sort of like just in the foreground. So bump, nah, not the shadows. Let's take out. Yeah, the exposure a tiny bit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So once I do one photo, I usually do just copy and put it in on the other photos. And then I try to edit. So it matches. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so that would pretty much be that. So you do that on every photo uh, on the interior. 
and you sort of like build a story of, I can show you an example of, we have, here I did on the, the Porsche. So on the interior shot, we have, So start shots on the left side, driver side, to get the Turbo S as well as some details on the seats. Then you have the main shot interior, down on the door again. Then we move into the into the interior and to the car. We have driver position, so speedometers, wheel, watch. Then we move all the way over to the right side. So you, you kind of like go through and tell, tell sort of like a miniature story inside the interior because it's in the interior that we spend all our time. So I guess that's an important part. So now we're gonna do the light painting photos. And these actually look pretty good straight out of camera. So here you can see we have a ISO 50, 16 millimeter width on F13. So you get every detail in the background as well. And 15 second shutter. And we just move around with the light. So we're gonna do a quick edit here as well. Bump up the shadows a bit. I actually like the I was sort of like cold. Let's do a little bit of dehaze. Exposure up a tiny bit. And let's make the red go a tiny bit down. Yeah, green, aqua, and blue. Just a tiny bit so we get yeah, something like this. And that's actually a tiny, tiny before and after, but it's so good straight out of camera very often when I do a light painting like this. And then we can just copy that and paste it on on this side. And it works perfectly. What you would do is, you, when you've taken the photos, uh, edited them, what I usually do is that I take away the, um, I use a pen tool in Photoshop to take away the, um, the windscreen and the like mirrors on mirrors and windscreens on the driver and passenger side. So you can get sort of like this. So here I've cut cut out everything and just edit in how I'd like it would be a backlit. And it gives a completely different look compared to, to um, natural lights, but a really cool, cool uh, feature. So this is strobing or light painting and this is natural lights. So it really depends on the shoot and sort of like the feel you're going for. So now we've moved towards spring and summer. I would rather shoot natural light than shooting at night and strobing. That's pretty much what I do during winter time. So that's pretty much how I do interior from the thought process on shoot, uh, the editing, and yeah, pretty much what I think when I do interior shots. A lot of you have asked me how I do it, if I could make a tutorial, like, yeah. So this pretty much covers what I do think and edit afterwards. So if you liked the video, please give it a like, subscribe if you wanna see more, and please do comment below like what do you want to see in the future videos? I could do a pretty much in-depth lighting 
like light painting and strobing tutorial. Um, I'm gonna get around to do the quick tip videos. I haven't really gotten around to that yet, but it's coming. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and have a great one. Bye.